Hello everyone, back tuning into today's second video. Uh, so running a bit late today with today's second video, but we're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. Uh, and of course we'll have all the latest developments in terms of this stratospheric warming that we've been talking about seemingly for several days. Uh, now it looks like it's still all on course uh, for next week. And then it'll be a case of waiting to see what the uh, impacts, if there are any, uh, are, uh, of the warming uh, is going to second half of February. Just say that the 5 day forecast was released early. You can find the video chat here on the homepage. Just scroll down the page a little bit and it's above snow desk, also written version. You can get to that from the buttons at the top of the page. It'll be quite cold and unsettled in the coming five days. So we'll begin by having a look at what's happening in the uh, stratosphere um, in terms of the temperature at 10 HPO, which is one of the top levels of the atmosphere, say in the uh, stratospheric part of the uh, atmosphere uh, over North Pole. So beginning today, this is the uh, forecast chart from the uh, GFS. This is uh, today, 7th of February. You can see these blue colours that we've got here over pole, that's the, uh, those are the cold temperatures that we've got over North Pole uh, at the moment running through. Keep those blue colours maintained for the next few days. But over weekend into next week, here come the green colours. Yellow colours starting to push in towards North Pole. So by the 12th of February, a stratospheric warming uh, is taking place. Quite a pronounced warming of the uh, stratosphere with those orange colours appearing around Greenland and also over towards uh, Siberia. That uh, intensifies a little bit more as we go through to 13th of February. And uh, we have a very warm stratosphere, I have to say, by the time we get through to the middle part of the uh, month. And then still the idea that we get this renewed bout of warming over Canada with those big red colours uh, turning up over the Canadian part of the Arctic. I think that's quite unusual uh, for that to happen, for the warming to be over there. But uh, quite a big warming of the stratosphere occurring over uh, Canada around 16th, 17th of February. That kind of phase, you can't maintain those sort of temperatures very long in the stratosphere, but we keep it generally significantly warmer than average with these stratospheric temperatures uh, right way through to the end of the GFS run, which would be 23rd of uh, February. Uh, and the ECDR still continues to pick up on this. So this is from the uh, University of Berlin uh, website. Uh, again, looking at 10 HPA. Uh, starting at 96 hours, you'll see that we're beginning to infiltrate a little bit of warmth into the uh, stratosphere then by the 10th of February. But it's really around the 11th that the temperatures start to pick up. Um, pronounced uh, pick up in the temperatures over North Pole. By the way, I've explained this before, but just to say it again, this black uh, cross that you see here is the actual um, North Pole uh, of the Northern Hemisphere. So warming intensifies as we go through to 144 hours, which is the 12th of February. Proper uh, sort of sudden stratospheric warming is taking place then, and this continues up to uh, the uh, 13th of February, which is 168 hours. Um, and then it sees, uh, starts to pick up and sees that uh, renewed bout of warming starting to appear over uh, Canada. So if you think that's the North Pole, just there, we've got Greenland and Canada in that sort of area. And again, the intensification of the warm signal continues over Greenland and Canada as we go to 116 hours. A major sudden stratospheric warming event is taking place over the Canadian side of the Arctic at that point. And that continues up to 240 hours, day 10, uh, 16th of uh, February, again, a very pronounced and major warming event of the stratosphere taking place on the Canadian side uh, of the Arctic. Um, and still signs that this is uh, going to infiltrate down to lower levels. So this is the um, day 10 forecast from the ECMWF uh, website, courtesy of the University of Berlin uh, website. This is day 10 chart at 30 HPA, which is a little bit lower than uh, 10 HPA, still in the stratosphere, but a little bit closer towards the troposphere. And again, we can see that uh, the warming is appearing there. That's the uh, North Pole of the Norm Northern Hemisphere just there. And you'll see that the orange colours are appearing there at uh, 30 HPA. So the warming is all on course. Um, going to be quite a pronounced warming, especially that Canadian uh, warming that occurs uh, between around 192 and 240 hours, days 8 to 10. 
all still on course, and we see that the uh, Zola winds are forecast to drop further. So uh, I was talking about this yesterday. Um, this is where we've been with the zonal winds, this blue line here through the season. You see, you had a very strong zonal wind around December and January. Gradually, we've been easing off, as you expect us to do as we go into the second half of winter. The zonal winds have been easing. Um, so that's where we are sort of right now. Um, and you'll see that the zonal winds are forecast to go negative. This is zero just here. This is minus 20, minus 14. You see from this black line, that uh, we're going to an ever lower level, actually. This is lower than what we saw yesterday uh, with that black line. So we're going to an ever lower level in terms of the uh, zonal winds. We're going to get a reversal of the zonal winds if this is right. And uh, they're going to go uh, negative. And uh, that tells us we're going to see a dramatic weakening of the zonal winds of the Northern Hemisphere uh, as we go through into the second half of February, which should very much start to limit the strength of the polar vortex around Greenland and uh, possibly we replace it um, with uh, blocking, proper northern blocking. That's kind of like what tends to happen when the zonal winds uh, start to go into their negative phase. So already still on course. We'll uh, keep you updated with it over the uh, next few days. This is the uh, GFS temperature and precipitation ensemble for uh, Manchester for the uh, next couple of weeks. That's where we are uh, right now. Pretty cold. Still going to be up and down with the temperatures for the rest of the week and into the weekend as well. Uh, and then it's going to the second half of February, this period just here. Overall, quite a bit of scatter, but yeah, would say that essentially we are still trending a little bit cooler than average, really. And there are several ensemble members that are going down to very cold levels again, minus 10, uh, close to minus 10, uh, 850 HPA. Uh, by the time you're getting into the third week of February, which is that um, period just there. It's a long way off, and there is quite a bit of scatter, so it's not a clear-cut signal. But I think the GFS summers are generally looking quite cold uh, at the moment. This is how uh, the surface temperatures are looking for uh, Manchester. So let's just close in a little bit uh, on this and scroll down. Going to pull back a little bit. So uh, this is how the surface temperatures are uh, looking. Again, starting off quite cold, going a bit milder, and then quite up and down really over weekend to the start of next week. Uh, after that, through to the early part of next week, just sort of flatlining at a fairly cold uh, level. And if anything, maybe signs that we're starting to lower those temperatures a bit into the extended uh, range. But again, quite a lot of scattering there. There are quite a few ensemble members that are going to quite a mild level, but there are several really very cold ensemble members as well. So it's probably still a bit indeterminate, really, this third week of uh, February. In relation to air pressure, which I haven't shown you uh, for a while, starting off at around 1,020 millibars. And again, we see this up-down sort of pattern. So sometimes quite low pressure, sometimes relatively high. Uh, and then maybe a general sort of rise in pressure, I think, as we go into this third week of February just here. Again, quite inconclusive, quite indeterminate. But overall, I think the GFS ensembles are gradually shifting to something drier, colder and more anticyclonic for that third week of uh, February. Temperature anomalies from the 7th to the 15th of February, the coming week, the second week of February, if you like, are uh, coming out colder than average for the UK and for Ireland, also for many western parts of Europe as well. It's been this story over the past few days. Eastern parts of Europe, that's where the uh, above average temperature anomalies are. Precipitation anomalies from the 7th to 15th of February, Overall, quite close to average, maybe for northern western parts, going to go a little bit above average, uh, perhaps. So this is how the GFS is looking for Saturday when we uh, is covered with Friday forecast, by the way. Um, we start off quite cold and frosty on Saturday, but then we bring wet and windy weather in from the Atlantic. Then we go into quite a cold and showery second half of the weekend and early part of uh, next week. Back to sort of wet and windy conditions through the middle part of next week. So Tuesday to Wednesday uh, next week turns wet and windy. Notice again all these pink and purple colours uh, around the Northern Atlantic, Iceland, Greenland, over towards Canada. That tells us that a, a week's, in a week's time, the polar vortex is still very much in business. It's still there churning away 
and uh, driving the weather across the Atlantic and into Europe. We'll know that the Southern Stratospheric Warming is having an effect if it does, on our side of the pole, by these purple and pink colours disappearing from these maps. So the polar vortex is still very much in business into the middle of the month anyway, uh, so still maintaining these westerly winds, albeit they are still quite cold westerly winds, so they have been all winter, a colder variety of westerly winds, but nevertheless still driving weather in from the Atlantic, not easterly. Uh, this takes us to day 10, when, uh, which is fr uh, Saturday 17th February, when we're still in this westerly flow. You'll notice heights are trying to rise to both our south and to our east. The pink and purple colours around Green are possibly starting to lose their intensity. And then this continues into the extended range of the GFS, where we see the polar vortex gradually getting weaker and weaker. And so by the end of the GFS run, we are being placed in an easy wind. We have high pressure taking over across Scandinavia and turning the winds into the east. There's the upper air temperature showing got a lot of cold air sitting just to our east, ready to attack us on those easterly winds. Now, whether that does actually come off, we have to wait and see, because it isn't necessarily guarantee that we will see the polar vortex weakening and allowing this blocking signal on our side of the pole. Um, but uh, the GFS has been fairly consistent about this, that we keep this PV going uh, very strongly up to the middle of February, and then the third week of February sees a, gra a gradual reduction in the strength of the PV, allowing this high pressure test up, maybe over Scandinavia, maybe somewhere else. Uh, this is how the ECWF is looking, so again, we're in this cold westerly flow on Sunday, with wintry showers probably in the north and west, and we maintain westerly winds um, as we go through into uh, Monday as well. So continue to look very unsettled really through towards next week. Low pressure is dominating. Again, it's a colder variety of westerly winds, but it is unsettled, wet and windy up to the middle of next week. That's Wednesday, 14th of February. Uh, into the extended range of the ECMDF, which takes us to day 10. We keep things unsettled. You'll notice heights are very slowly rising up here. Uh, and particularly around Greenland, we're losing those pink and purple colours very gradually, taking a while to do it, but remember, this is only at the point uh, just beyond the first warming of the stratosphere over North Pole, and at this point, the Canadian warming, that intense warming, very intense warming of the Canadian Arctic is still taking place on the 17th of February. So you would expect the response in the atmosphere to be further on than this, uh, really, but maybe a few signs that heights are beginning to rise across Greenland, but um, nevertheless, we maintain those westerly winds, quite cold winds, but unsettled westerlies up to day 10. This is how the debilt ensembles are looking. Debilt is in Holland, of course. So if we only get easterly winds, then the first sign of it will be things turning colder to our east over the low countries. We're starting off cold at the moment. Uh, and then the temperatures are lifting up for debilt. Um, so the ECNF is seeing, ECNF on summers, I should say, is seeing that temperatures are going to become a little bit less cold, still chilly really, but a little bit less cold over the weekend and into next week. So this is a classic sort of cold zonal type signal. What you may be able to notice is that um, through the middle part of next week, generally the ECNF on summers are losing the frost risk. Uh, but then later on, this is sort of the third week of February just here, and later on we start to see some really quite hard frost coming back. Um, so maybe those on some levels are starting to produce those easterly uh, winds. But it is still all very indeterminate, and uh, it won't really be until this sudden stratospheric warming has happened that the models are able to see what the effects of it, if there are any are going to be. So it continues to be the sort of story we talked about in the video yesterday, actually, for the next week to 10 days. We are in for quite cold weather, and there will be snow at times, I think, with this quite cold weather, and that will be most likely in the north and over high ground. Also unsettled weather, so I expect several bouts of wind and rain, uh, probably some severe gales at some point as well, maybe most likely around the middle part of next week, which could turn 
quite stormy. Uh, and just unsettled cold uh, and uh, windy, really, as we go up to the middle part of February. And then beyond that, do we get the blocking as a result of the warming of the stratosphere? If we do, where does it sit? Do we get wind into the east? That is all to be discovered, and we'll be keeping you updated about it, of course, over the coming few days. Right, don't, you, don't forget to check out Friday Forecast if you haven't yet done so, but that's all for now, and thanks for watching.